Dreamax I pre bro. The I'm bored there, man. Some, some better off a live stream, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna try to um, recreate that delay here upon the, the slate digital thing. So upon the left we have a 16th note delay. Turn off the link. So upon the left we have a 16th note, upon the right we have a eight note. Up on the right, we have a dotted delay. On the, the left side, we have a regular. Feedback, they about 10 o'clock. High pass it a little bit. And then low pass as well. A little bit higher. Um, that should be it. So we can turn off that. So if we feed it, to the delay it's supposed to have this uh, so if we turn off the delay and turn on what the other one uh, a little bit closer but not the exact same thing but it will work uh, let's find a good reverb Two two four, acoustic chamber with attack high, low, mid. Let's add some space. Too much. EQ to this. Get rid of all of the bass. Most of the bass. Let's EQ the sound itself. Yeah, pray them. Um, yeah, brother, the um, the track I'm gonna do not mix. End up I forgot to do it another time because for whatever reason, some of the file them kind of get messed up. Um, not really messed up with them. I'm gonna try to sort them out. Them wouldn't come out the way I wanted. So I'm just saying, me just wait until another day or whatever. The project good though. I'm just have to reorganize the sound them. Alright, so. I want a little bit of the bass in this and a little bit of the high still. Um, the good thing about this EQ is the mid side processing is crazy. So I'll go take this up and split it so I can take the side and get rid of all of that. Left the middle. You know what I mean? I can get rid of all of the middle and left the side. Yeah, EQ are crazy. Crazy as fuck. All right, so, take anything below 60. I'll sharpen up the curve a little bit. Then we'll start doing some kind of surgical EQing with that thing. So right so split this or change this to 48. We'll take out a little bit at the side here. I left the mids a little bit like that. Right so kind of see a frequency I'm going to like. Right here. So I'll we'll take out about 6 dB. Then we'll split it. The mids. We'll make it a little bit wider. About 36. 
So we kind of carve up the sound away. We're going to boost the high with a shelf. Slow up. 96, so really sharp. Okay, cool. EQ are crazy as fuck. That don't look not like a <laughs> some regular thing. Think <laughs> crazy as fuck. Um, it's the Fab Filter EQ man, the Pro Q two from Fab Filter, brother. That thing no normal, bridge, I swear. <laughs> and this ain't nothing, brother. Me can go even crazy with that EQ, brother. I'm saying Sergio called me in this thing is. So precise, it don't make no sense, Regin. Swear. Alright, let's add second song. Right. Have some pizzicato. But as I can hear them, have some reverb on it. I don't really want to get rid of all light still. We'll keep some. Let's get box some reverb. Cause without reverb, the chat does sound empty, dry, and boring. So let's get rid of a little bit of the bass. We don't really need to go surgical with this. Boost the high with a shelf. And it's a frequency right there, some kind of. Right, kind of like the sound there. Let's get some of the bass, tighten this up a little bit. All right, cool. Let's come down a little bit when I want to move. All right, so with the first song, you can't really hear the first song. So, what I'm gonna do is grab something special. I'm gonna try. TV Audio SD1. I will use that and try space it out so we can have it wrap around the pizzicato. I mean, so let's. Play with the width first, or we'll push this probably like 125, something like that. So you kind of destroy the audio though. I mean, let's just push to 100. Spark. Okay, so the other track. So now you can hear the pluck and the, the piece of card that I play at the same time. I mean, like I said, we don't want too much of the bass though. You can lower the volume from both of them. Add the BS. Mm 
All right, cool. So I'm like, well, this, this is to give me an opportunity for try out a plugin. Um, so the plugin now is Ravage. I have it on my page. It's a free plugin. These are the full version. I have two different versions. I have the, the free version, which is the light version, which is just a, like a small version of the big plugin. And then I have the full version on him, Ravage. So I'll test it out. See if it worked. The investment is like a distortion type of thing, saturation type of thing. So I like to use something there from a bass line for kind of give me bass uh, uh, a different feel to it, uh, a, a girt and a grit. And I mean that type of flavor and a sound to make it stand out more. So I'll we'll see how good this really is. So turn down the drive to zero, left everything else default. So I'm not touching it for right now. This is actually the first time I'll use it. So it's, you know, hopefully it's not much of a learning curve to it. I just drop and go. So then we had the different modes, right? That's what it look like. So we have tube distortion, diode, zero, square, rectify, digital. Um, I think more you like go with tube or diode because I'm more circuitry. All right, so the BS, first of all, make it mono. Then we'll start trying to dial in some distortion to this. All right, I think a better way to use it would be put it on a bus, so I'll do that. And what I say that is it give me the opportunity to take it directly from half of the, the, the BS itself directly. So now we can have the dry signal and a separate wet mix, um, wet signal and blend it all them together. So if we send the BS to the saturation bus over here, so I send about 30% of the signal. That should be enough if you make a difference. So you can hear already louder. But if you add the drive to it, let's add a low pass, take out some of the high to about 12, about 1.8, that's fine. Let's now start playing around with the actual distortion now. Uh, I So without it, so if I can hear, get a little bit bigger. Um, it's not totally like crushed or anything like that. If probably me use like the decapitator from Sound Ties, like which is one of the best on the market, you'd hear much more of a difference. But for right now, for what it is, it's perfectly fine. Can always fine tune it later. But definitely improve the sound a lot. So without it to the other two instruments. And then with it. It's like the bass just come on top and kind of take over, you know what I mean? Which is exactly what I go for. So it do the job. Oh, yeah, man. Do you think, brother, the man sent that Thailand to blood clot? Would I kill if he left the country? <laughs> I swear, would I kill if he left America? Right, blood clot. No pun of vacation. Big up yourself, though, brother. Every time. All right, so let's bring in the club.
All right, so without making the clap outrageously loud, what we can do to make it bigger is just add some reverb to it. If you get more body, more girth, and what EQ it seems if you make it a little bit brighter in a certain little area. It's not nothing drastic though. Okay, so typical frequency on without boost without even listening to it. Or cut everything below 80. Let's get a sharper curve. I'm going to say, I'll cut everything below 80. The boost. Right around 300. Some sharp. The boost 15K. Or not 15K, but like 1.5K. Something like a bit wider. And then we'll boost with a sharp shelf. Everything above 6K. And just like that, simple, effective, it's a lot brighter, you know what I mean? Just add the kicks. Put them pretty much on like a level with everything else. But on the BS, I don't add the Fab Filter Pro C because I don't side chain the kick on the BS. The BS right now is mono, but I have a stereo BS on so my lay up on top of the BS so I already a place. So I'm we'll use a stereo version of the plugin. So let's go in now. Notice how the bass fade out. That's because I have the plugin set up already. All I have to do going is just route up the drums and we have this. Cool. So kick from the new drum kit. Really don't need much editing, but one thing I'm gonna like to do with all of my kicks, them unless me absolutely need some color to them, I always EQ them the same exact way, which is get rid of all of the higher frequency them and keep the bass preset just like this. So that's a before, or that's after the EQ, and this a before. Notice so I have like a little click to it, a little bit of color. But now it's dark, I you know, have no sound. I like me kicking them for sound like that. Yeah, man, Dream X, man, I hate it. Them have a click, brother, I swear. But some people love it, I swear. I am see some people boost the high end of them kick them. But sometimes it can sound good, it all depends on the type of kick wire I use. So that's just me, you know, and you, I guess, you know. <laughs> um, so the snare right here, so I use the Waves EQ for them. I have a preset is why I use the Waves EQ for them. It's a custom preset as well. Or do mono. Because from the looks of it, you know, look like I have the snares that do any type of crazy thing. So I'll use a mono version of the plugin. <clears throat> so feel free to copy the preset if you want. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing preset. Just listen to the before and after. So I'm not going to raise the volume at all. I'll just turn on the EQ and you'll hear the snare just get brought up. Just by turning on the EQ, you know what I mean? Simple. Crank it a little. Put the delay up on it.
Then we have the first lead. Uh, so you can hear the, the, the first part of the lead a little bit <clears throat> aggressive, right? Plug in here is kind of a little bit all over the place. It now easy for maneuver just because of all them have it laid out. So I look for the attack and that don't fix that the problem I have with the sound. If I can find it. Um, distortion, detune, fine tune, delay. Delay amount, cut off, gain, attack, right? So, so if you turn up the attack on all both of them envelope, I was supposed to solve that the problem there with the harsh, this nice sound. See that? Just like that. If you turn it down here, like this rigid, rigid, I mean, rugged click at the front of the sound. I mean, when I mean, we like that, we want it smooth. Then if we turn up the release, we can make a transition even smoother. Let's play with the D tune real quick. Cool. Now we can EQ it. Fab filter, of course. Which one? Dreamx, the green one. So I'll start with a preset or a master filter. All right, so you can see, so really the energy in the sound are the all the way up about five to seven hundred. So anything below four hundred unnecessary. I mean, so because this is a lead and the characteristics of it, I will make me like it. Oh, yeah, man, it named um, Vacuum Pro, bro, from, from Ear Music. The same people that want to make X-Pan, how they make it. It's a good plugin. Me use it every now and then. It have more retro type of sound, you know what I mean? And I really, the modern type of sound in that is more of the classic um, analog, really, really synthesized type of thing. As opposed to like a Nexus Omnisphere or something like that. Them the more modern. It's a modern plug-in though, but it have a really old school engine I drive it. You know what I mean? All right, so <clears throat> for this now with the lead, our model is more use the first EQ and identify some frequency. A kind of harsh and then use the F6 for kind of fix them. All right, so we have two writers, all right? So we have one writer, so about 623. So I'm going to use this, put it at 623. We'll make the range minus 3.7, set the threshold to minus 25. And this ain't nothing but a multiband compressor or a dynamic EQ, what? Whichever one you want to call it. My mother is just I use it for kind of tame down some of them harsh frequency. So let's tighten up the cue, make it a little bit more narrow. Even more than that. And then we'll increase the range from minus that to minus seven. So anytime it gets too out of control, and I mean we'll correct it. Then you have another frequency now. Right, so, so we have 512 as well. So let's go back to the F6. Let's use the 
frequency three or bandwidth three and go 512. Do the same thing as far as range, minus seven. Gain, now I'm gonna touch the gain, but the threshold for this time would have set it to minus 28. Attack will make it a little bit faster <clears throat> and a little bit faster upon release. The Q need to sharpen it up all the way. All right, so a couple more. So what I like about the EQ, it's so fucking multidimensional, can solo out frequencies too. All right, so 3,208, we have another problem. So, dial it in, threshold are set to minus 35. Attack this time, want it really fast because we'll get higher up in the frequency and our release. Want a little bit slower range, we'll go minus four. Q go a little bit wider this time. Let's delete this. Play it back now with the rest of the rhythm. With the effects off. So with the effects on, it's just more down the center and a little bit, well not a little bit, but a lot cleaner and a lot smoother and a lot less harsh on your ears, especially for when we are turning it up later on. Um, the last one more add to it is a chorus or a flanger actually from Native Instruments. So we have this. The preset I want is the space flanger. I'll put it first. Cool. Then we'll add a reverb to the sound or add some reverb to the sound. So right around here, there's a massive like spike in the frequency. So I'm going to correct that by just lowering this, just to start out with. Perfect. Fix that. Just like that. Next instrument. Expand again. I believe this is an arpeggiator. Not 100% sure yet. So what I'm going to do for this is because we already have a lot of instruments incorporated into the truck, you know what I mean? You know, want kind of crowd it, so you want to start push things a certain way. So in this case, I'm going to automate that. So first of all, kind of clean up the sound a little bit, just EQ wise. Um, but as far as the panning go, or we'll use pan man to kind of spread it around, make it dance a little So I have this one on my like where it get four upon, like if you listen to it. So why do it make it play for like four seconds, five seconds upon one side? And then it switch to the other side. Now I mean so if it not. Just so if you're not crowd up the, the, the frequencies and all of that. So let's now EQ it a little bit, kind of get rid of some of the mud. All 
and give it a little bit of brightness. Also add some saturation to it. And then last, we will put a limiter upon it, a stock limiter from FL Studio. Actually, I go with the L2 from Waves. Which have less controls, but it's more effective. All right, so if you don't know, um, the way you set your limits inside of this plugin is really simple. So what you do is you click this thing in the middle with the two arrow and you drag up and down. Once you start get some gain reduction over here, so it's a T T E N, then you let go this and you bring up back your output to the level where you want your signal. So I'll do that and try to find a sweet spot. All right, so the reason why I do the whole limiting is because I want the signal for the sound for one level as a whole. I don't want one side louder than one side. And in the case right now, the left side is a lot louder than the right side. So I try to balance that out with the limiter. So I'll put this back on minus 13.2. Alright, so now if you look at the meter in a FL Studio, you can see so we have a consistent level on both sides. Volume no load up on either side, which is cool. So back with the track. Alright, cool. So we like that, but we don't like the type of movement we're going, so we'll change that too. A pendulum. And just make it bounce left and right. Next instrument. Simple, simple, simple. That's all. Put a EQ, load a preset, add some reverb, delay, and we're good. Same thing again, another chant, so stock EQ, same preset, reverb, delay, this time we'll flip the face, I'll flip the signal. Hi hats. Cool. Look a bit of reverb, a little bit. Just enough you can hear it. Delay. 
just for play with the ears a little bit. Know what I mean? Just to play with the ears and a little bit of saturation. Just for some brightness. So upon the eye at itself, what I'm going to do is add a chorus. Yeah, so I'm going to just kind of get creative, just trying things, you know what I mean? Just go mad pop, let's go choral. So that's without the chorus. That's with it. So note if we kind of take out a little bit of the brightness, you know what I mean? Which is perfectly fine. Can I use the saturation and get it back? Nice. Then we have the second lead from Sector, which is this. So we have another harsh sound, so let's turn up the attack. Actually, let's turn up the attack here. I kind of like that. Let's see what it sounds like with the other lead. All right, so our model is for, with, the, with one lead, we'll make one play center and then the other one will kind of wrap it around it. Stack plugin for that, of course. Let's right click on this guy, Listen to the. So with the other sound now, if we make it rap, reverb. Of course, we'll kind of clean up the sound a little bit. No want it too destructive to the ears because it kind of grimy a little bit. So round these out, smooth it out. So we kind of have the teal part at, uh, 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 you know what I mean? So they did it. Uh, Cause it bright. And then we have the other main sound on it. Not, uh, not getting each other away, you know what I mean? So now we have the other snares. Crank them up. Waves again. Same snare preset again. Mono again. Lord snare presence just works wonders without even raising the volume. And then the good thing about me using a mixing template, you know, what I mean, is. The fact that if more we can just mute a certain instrument, so let's more take out the leads. But I don't want to mute them individual, I just take out the both of them at the same time. Just come over here to so find my leads, which is this one, turn it off. 
no leads, you know what I mean? Can't turn off the main synths. You know what I mean? So even though you're kind of still are here, somebody, the, the, the instruments I'm going to turn off, that's just the effects. So if we turn off the effects, you know what I mean? So expand here. Let's route this to real instruments. Should already be there. Don't know why it's not. Cool. All right. You know what I mean? So that's just the good thing about me using a mix template. Let's turn off the leads door. All right. So now we have a clap and there's a big clap at, at that. So what we do with that, add a reverb to it or add some reverb to it. A lot of reverb to it, of course. So now, like I said earlier, the BS, what I'm using this track is two different parts, right? So we mixed the first part earlier, which was the Nexus sign BS. So this part now is the second part, which is something from Serum. It's not so much a straight up BS. It have a little bit of strangeness to it, you know what I mean? So we have to kind of blend them together. We have to just meet in the middle with it and see how it fit. This is the song. And I mean, so with the bass. Okay, so them sound good together. You just have to make sure I set them clean and not too muddy. All right, so the other bass me I use for, for body, right? So let's go Fab Filter, Stereo, EQ, Pro 2. And then once again, we'll go in surgical with it, you know what I mean? So, I know I don't really need anything below a hundred what I say per se because base frequency you don't really need it for this so I'll put that at a hundred we do sharpen that up make this curve one so that's what we really want you know what I mean so because I have the other bass mono, so it I play down the center. What I do, do is use this and push around this and push around the side. So with the EQ, with the mid side mode, just pick a frequency. So right, that's all right. So let's put this back, reset it pretty much, and drop the boost to zero. Let's split it. Take the side, right click on it, we'll go slope, we'll go 96, something sharp, and we'll push it up by about 2 dB. While the middle, we'll take that down by about 15 dB. What the fuck? Let's right click split, take this. 
minus 15. Now the sound sound a little bit weird, of course, but that's because it's playing by itself. So if we play it with the other bass now, I love this EQ, I swear to God. Oh my God. This thing is crazy. When I look upon the type of cuts what this fucking EQ can do, it's just like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> um, so with the other, other bass, this is how I have now. So now I've in a sound empty, and I mean in a sound weird anymore. It's just normal now. Because I play the two of them together. Then upon the bass track here, I'll go slot or I'll get the which bus compressor I want to use. I'll go with the plugin alliance BX tones and our tone house bus compressor. And what more use this do is kind of glue them together. So let's get some compression going on. Want about 40 dB, close to 40 dB a compression. So without the compressor, subtle but very effective, you know what I mean? So now on to the next instrument, we have the Mark, I was about to say Mark Cato, but it's the Staccato strings from x -Pan. So increase volume, turn off the last one. Here, stock plugins, EQ, preset, reverb, EQ, cut that out, high pass shelf, turn off that, that, and that, make this sharp, come up to about 80. Cool. So I want no BS whatsoever. Because the sound will drown it with reverb. Let's go. Stock plugins again. Stereo shaper. Right click, go delay. Let's turn up the volume. Both here. And get rid of some of that. Add some reverb. Add some saturation. Cool. Let's go inside the X pan, increase the volume a little bit more. Main level. Let's play it back with the track. Last, we have some bells, so we'll add a lot of shit ton of reverb too. So let's crank that. Also, some delay, of course, we kind of, you know, some ear candy. And then we'll add Panman to it. No EQ. I will make them just do whatever they want. So I'll go some random thing, you know what I mean? So anyway, they want to go fine by me. 
Um, lastly, it's on solo. So with everything. So that take care of the whole um, mixing process with the the first part. You know what I mean? You still have to bus compress everything and all of that. So let's get rid of all of these VSTs off of the screen. All right, cool. The only one I will bring back now is the VU meter. First plug-in on the mix bus. For me, it's always a compressor or an EQ. In this case, I'm going to go with an EQ, the Fab Filter EQ, so stereo, Dynamics EQ, boom. This one, this first one is really simple. It's just a complete filter. So we we'll filter anything below 30 hertz, anything above 19,650, kind of clean up the track a little bit, make it a little bit tighter. Make it a whole leap tighter, you know and I mean, <clears throat> very subtle but very effective once again. So back to the stereo bus. Secondly, we have a bus compressor now. Here you can go with whatever you feel like you might want to use. <clears throat> For my case, um, my flavor I'm more use the. API twenty five hundred from Waves. Very, very, I mean, me use this on a, on a kick or a bass, something I use it on other day and really realize how good it, it is, you know what I mean? So, we we'll look for about 1 to 2 dB. So, the red part, we we'll look for about 1 to 2 dB, a compression. We're not, not much more than that. And the good thing about the compressor is have an auto gain function. So anything that we take out automatically get at the inbox. So we don't have to do that ourselves. Let's switch on the analog feature. And that should be about it. Should be a, a good amount of compression. Like I said, we only want about 2 dB. And so now we really start to watch the meter, right? Now me and EMF peak out around minus five. You know what I mean? So if we start go over, we'll start scale back some instruments. So pay attention to the meter as well. good next tape machine j37 wheels again
And with this song, we'll go with another priest to my love, fat, tight, and open mastering. Listen to the difference. It just add a level of clarity, ear, some, like a breath of fresh ear right in the rhythm, you know what I mean? Only thing when we change is the fact that it had a lot of noise, so this. So just put that to zero. Sometimes we just turn it off. Sometimes we keep it on though. So down here towards the bottom, let's go back to waves again. Let's add the L2 limiter. Stereo, of course. Make sure you have your limiter stereo. Um, let's go over to the here. Let's go turn that off. Put this to 0 0.29. Turn it back on. Let's go back on the mixer. Turn it off. And I'm about to add another plugin from Plugin Alliance. It's called the Analog Black Box. <clears throat> and right in front of that, we'll all add this plugin from Eyes to Up the Imager. Reason why I add the imager is because more kind of give the instruments the men all some defined roles, and I mean want them know which part them a player, and you know what I say. So that's the whole reason for the for the image. I'm gonna put it underneath this. I'm gonna drag the tape machine over to the left a little bit. And it's my only problem with this image is that it you can't resize it. That's the only thing we hate about it, but is what it is man hold on there. okay so my model is push the l2 over here so and put that there so and that's where we fit in here so nope <laughs> all right so that's cool let's um go into the image i click learn play the track make it learn the frequency then All right, so what's it done? And we can do now is solo out the frequencies them and go in and put them either mono or stereo myself. Switches to polar. So the reason why I hear it seems as if the bell is low frequency is because of the reverb. So what I'm gonna do is go with the lower frequency, we will go about minus 20 for start. Yeah, I can't remember. We can't go fully mono because we have the stereo portion at the bass as well so that's good let's go up to low mids or get a little bit of weight so about 12.3 and as you can hear just get a little bit of about a little bit of spread to it so let's unsolder that go high mids Typically what I like to do with the low mid and the high mid is whatever I do with the low mid, I double it with the high mid. So if we got 6, we got 12 for this. So in this case, I got 
And then for the highs, because of high hats and like a tweet and everything, they wouldn't really need to pay too much attention to it. So we'll just eat something. <laughs> Not really matter, to be honest. 100. Yeah, so now kind of pay attention, and I mean, the, the hi hat, you can't really hear it like that. You can hear it, of course, but I can't hear it stand out, like pop out. That would all fix with the, the black box. So, firstly, let's engage the in and out, all tubes, and ear. Turn down this knob, turn down this knob. Let's push triode up a little bit. 55 is fine. So now we'll add a little bit of saturation to the mid frequencies, right? Get some more girt. Unfortunately, being a fucking idiot, we forget to turn on the blood clot plugin and the other tweak knob. <laughs> oh boy. So let's turn the plugin on and do that again. Let's turn this off. So let's reset all of the knobs and let's go again. Let's crank the output back up. And that's that, pretty much. So now, <clears throat> going to the limit, and we'll limit this at minus 4 dB. So let's grab the threshold and start bringing it down. Okay, cool. So we'll get some good compression when I really squash it. So now we'll just double click on this minus four and the track is limited to minus four. Let's 
go down a little bit more with the threshold. So arranging the track now, Just turn off that, copy that, rename the pattern, insert one, PS, let's go playlist, right click, slip by channel, and drag them over one by one, boom. Still not add my tag yet, but that's a small thing, nothing too big. That, that, and that. Select them all, drag them over to the fifth bar. Let's do this. All right, so how we'll start it? We'll start with expand. Okay, cool. So start with expand, lead into Amnesphere and the other X one. real quick add it to the front it's damn it's B alright let's put it at the front F9 link it to the mixer um, turn it up a little bit let's link it to real instruments route to this track only right click on it file load up the preset feed Okay, so now we have this. Alright, so let's send this to the reverb. And a lot of it. Same thing with the delay. A lot of it. Mm, something seems weird about the reverb all of a sudden. Let's turn off the delay. So for the verse, we can kind of switch it up like so. Let's get the knife, chop the man at toes. Kind of play around with the melody like a bit. Mm. 
Met de sneaker dood. En last part I lead. Here and here. Just take out that. Duplicate that. Kinda can do it with the BS too. So let's go here. Let's cut this. Oh, now nah, gaming zone. Um, Billy, couple days ago, when we did a live stream early and they try mix a rhythm and some technical difficulties that I've been. So, we just pick a different rhythm. But, um, matter of fact, to be exact, Billy spawned the 18th or the 17th, one out of the two of them. Um, and they did just sit down on my desktop for a while. I'm just a fucking, I'm just mix it off, you know. This loop back here. Take out all of them. Uh. Actually, no, let's bring them back. Take out this uh, and this. All right, so let's take out all of them. Cool. So let's listen to that from the chorus. Add a loop. Dance all easy for me, then rhythms and so okay. Um, not necessary, bro. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I kind of find it easier to say hip hop or trap music nowadays is kind of fuckery because all I have to do is get one sample loop it a hundred times and um, 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 put some drums over it. And I mean, like hip hop, not as creative as it once was. Um, with dance hall or modern day dance hall. Is more say more creative, like 
more go into the melody than what I used to go into a melody. Um, but hip hop in a, a bad state, bro. It's like everything sound the same way because everybody just a sample, sample, sample. You know what I mean? Una flip this, a flip that, and all of them things that, to be honest, you know what I mean? But you know, dance all in a little bit of a good space. You know, I love to see more progression out of the artist, them, but you know, maybe that will come. Um, here control b control b yeah and this is like a simple rhythm where i'm some of the food run one day and i first would and just build it it's nothing complex just simple and that's really it to be honest um not too much going at it. um actually the melody is from uh a midi pack home of the unison midi pack uh, just to that, you know, test out on a full run and come up with the melody, belly rhythm, put it down to the side or whatever and end up saying, yeah, I hate that. So I'm going to know is this thing, well, industry people call it printing. It's more print the mix inside the FL studio. You know what I mean? Um, so let me say stereo, bus, mix, down. Let's change the color to light blue and see if that. Let's do that. And for print in a FL studio, it's really simple. It's a lot simpler in a 20 and 12 than 11. Um, so, yeah, that really is just whatever track. Like, on me, I have all of my instruments routed to one track, right? So, what I want to do is make sure that everything I go through the master bus and Turn on record on the master bus, which is right here. Turn on record in a FL studio. Now, my track limited to minus four. So if you wonder what make the wave form I'm gonna look like, what it look like, that is exactly why. Um, I'm done with the mix pretty much. So I'll just print the track you know, and take a listen to the, the complete mix while it's a print.
<clears throat> so let me say. <laughs> yeah, man, that's true thing, man. That's probably why you know, cause, you know, enough people don't like work hard for them one. So you might right, bro, to be honest. Yeah, so let me say. Track limited to minus four. This is the reason why the wheel farm is pretty much like on one level all the way through. It's because it's limited. This is the track where you would have sent to an artist. You know what I mean? You wouldn't send an artist something that look like like that. You know what I mean? Because I'm not have no headroom for doing no work. You can't really record over it and then mix it. You send an artist something like this with a, 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 a lower level, minus four, which is still loud, but it's not zero. So him can record over this mix, add some delay, add some verb, this, da, 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 without even needing the stems and all of them things. So if I send this to an artist, or I send a tracker to an artist, this is exactly what I would send me personally. Somebody else probably would have sent it next. That's for them problem. You know what I mean? So done with a tracker, like I say, I um, go up on my desktop and see if I have another reading point or somewhere. Or um fairy dreams good sushi all right the good sushi i think would be a good one for mixing at night yeah or morning however you look on it <laughs> so yeah my load up that is a uh, pretty moment it build for aishana so i create two folder real quick files and new folder project bones Cool. Let's copy these. Let's go into need mix. I go into bottle cap. Oh, we already have it in there. Cool. Let's go back to FL or export. Um, so if you don't want to lose, you read them. Um, the best piece of advice we can give us for um aside from saving the projects, whenever you're done, make sure you export your project bones and your project files. So that's what I'm at right now. I export the project files. Then I export the project bones next. I'm going to explain what them is one second. I'm going to go back to my desktop. Um, need for mix. Bottle cap. Project bones. Okay. All right. So while the eyes shine already, my load, right? I'm going to go back to the folder and load it. So while this are load, we explain the bottle cap thing. I'm just to... So yeah, the project files is when we export it, it copy all of the file, all of the hi-hats, kicks, sneers, all of them, the wave file or drum kit type of thing when we use and put it in a, wherever I want it, put it. So it's my creator folder called Project Files and I just want to put them. So if me ever need to locate the files or the sounds I'm use for the rhythm, yeah, let's say I get a new computer or whatever, but I still have the rhythm and I have my old drum kits, I can always pull up on the sound them out of the, the folder itself with the rhythm. The Project Bones now is if me get a new computer or whatever, let's say me have to reinstall FL Studio so I kind of change up some things. And if I know what I use upon a certain track, upon the mixer, all I have to do is go in here so find the file, copy it to the mixer and load up whatever I did after it. Like I can recreate the whole rhythm out of the project bones, automation, channel, effects, mixer, scores, all them things out of the one folder. Um, a lot of people, a lot of time I see people I tell me, say them lose rhythm because of this and because of that. Um, you know what I mean? And, and all of them things there. Um, I say, I want to see my master. It. Um, all right, it's not a problem, bro. Um, small thing, that man. Um, so let me close out of this. Open up a brand new, fresh session so I can get rid of some of the plugin wear and tear up on it right now. So I'll save this, of course, or close it. My mic don't go out until me set it up back. So give me about two minutes.
So, yeah, like I said, bro, mastering, small thing, small, small thing, you know what I mean? So let's go back inside the full life. We can get it open. Bottle cap rhythm. So, what I don't do know is. Oh, shit. <laughs> So whenever they drag out the, the file, so I'll just use this uh, for your example. So firstly, you want to know the tempo for the track, right? So in this case, I believe the tempo is 97. So I've got 97. Another way where you can figure it out is however you lay a rhythm. So if you know, say, have your verse first or your chorus first, Upon the ninth or upon the number nine is typically where that starts. So we have the four bar intro, the four bar build up, and then we have the verse or the chorus start. So in this case, we have the chorus right there. So, so we don't loop it, right? All right, cool. So we don't link this to any track. Me personally, I'll link it to the stereo mix bus right here. And then upon the master track, or insert certain plugins. So waves first. Okay, so we we'll use this for measure volume levels and all of them things, as I can see. So let's set that sideways. Make it smaller, put it on the bottom. Um, we don't bring back the same view meter that I used um, earlier. So I'll go back to TB Pro Audio, sound feel, and we don't go to my the MV meter. <laughs> what we'll probably do is we'll put it right beside, all right, underneath the, the Duro meter. So... Let's load. The first thing always is going to be a plugin. I'm not a plugin, but an EQ for me anyway. So in this case, I will use the Fab Filter Pro Q2. Put this in the corner. And so we have a meters pretty much set up a little bit. So let's go peak standard. Okay, so like I said, remember, so we we'll master the thing at minus four so if you play it the highest the nigga is supposed to go up on either one of these two meters is minus four so i'm gonna mute my mic and then do the do Okay, cool. So, reason I'm bringing the EQ is we'll do kind of some surgical, you know what I mean, type of cuts and all them things there. But I say I'm have Nexus crack with purity. Yeah, man, I mean, man. I think of the first two VST when I come across in it, bro. Matter of fact, no, hypersonic and then Nexus on the first two VST when I come across. But till to this day, man, Nexus after crack, brother, I mean, man. I'm mean, going to buy it too, but crack version better, you know? <laughs> all right so far as master and go like no when your eq everything is kind of based well we're not gonna say beast but everything now is kind of um surgical so anything you do it, it not gonna be drastic it's going to be very small scale very minuscule know what i mean <laughs> This is the reason why I'm replaced this. So this EQ is a mastering EQ. Reason why them call it that are is because of the increments. It click, you know what I mean? It not smooth, it not just slide around. It click in you know, every number where you go. So you can bring up back a session later on. So let's reset that and do a little bit of tweak. So if you listen to the, to the, um, the course, All 
right, so one thing when I hear what kind of a little bit annoying is the the sneers kind of have a little bit of a pop tweet, you know what I mean? It have a little bit of a click tweet. Um, so what I'm going to do is just focus in upon that specific frequency, find it. So we'll boost it first and then boost it just to find it and then we'll cut it out. I think we find it, so now let's go and cut and see if it. Perfect. So we have the frequency, 280. So this probably take out a dB out of it. Okay, cool. They have another frequency up top now. And even if you want more than that, we can switch this from six to nine and get more surgical with it. You know what I mean? All right, cool. Let's take out another DB. All right, so let's go boost up top now and try to figure out. Okay, I want to sharpen up the lead a little bit. Without it. Yeah, man, it's on the master channel, man. Everything depends on the master channel, you know. Just listen to all the bass tighten up and the, the snare come forward a little bit and the, the lead kind of duck a little bit. Which is cool, nice, one oh, man, perfect. Um, so really, mastering, bro, is EQing, compressing, limiting. You know what I mean? You know, use no flanger. You know, use no imager. You know, use no nothing. What have to do with left and right? Everything we you do is about volume control, clarity. And space, you know what I mean? And not so much even space, but volume control and clarity. So, like I said, we use the EQ for clean up the snare and the leads a little bit. Um, what we can do now is go in with some type of harmonics processor. If that was the case that it needed, but when we did a mix it down, I already had that, so I don't really need that. You know what I mean? So, our model is got EQ route and put a little bit of compression on it. Um, and parallel it a little bit. The compressor model I use is the the 670 from Overload. It's a new plugin. Ah uh, yeah, man. With our master, bro. Every plugin go on the master channel. You know what I mean? Because that's the one channel where all audio do run through. So that's the one way to make sure so everything get affected by the um by the by the by the by the processing way out there, you know what I mean? Because you know want to put a limit upon it and then upon a, a different channel and you know have certain channel that go through it because then you know I gotta limit everything. So my favorite sound in other compressor is the, the Los Angeles mode. It have a, like a crispy sound. I'm really like what come out of it. Um, link up all of the channel them. Switch this to Latvert. My voice don't change a lot of times because my, my voice I run through the master channel. So don't really pay attention to that. Um, so now let's go in and dial up the compression. We are looking for about a dB to 2 dB of compression. Nothing more than that. Oh, 
But parallel it a little bit, probably about 90% compressed, 10% dry, or a little bit less than that. cool so as far as volume go it sounds lower because it is because we don't add back no volume yet at all so that's what we are doing now so if we look on the in meter or it'll come in around 3 db so let's add back volume now upon the meter and make sure so we don't pass 3 db without the compressor. Just notice how everything come forward and everything just push right forward soon as I turn it on. Watch the orange button. Simple. So above the waves, um, Dora would all add the L2. Now I'm going to use it yet, though. Then underneath the compressor, would all add a tape machine. And the tape machine I'm not gonna use at all. I use it for the circuitry. So I'm gonna do is load up a preset when I actually do nothing. It's called Abbey Road's default. And this literally is not doing any type of processing. So if I listen to the even I mean barely I even touched the track. Um let's see, might not want it still. Just want it to run through the tape machine. Matter of fact, I'm always going to load the default. So fully reset it <clears throat> and just make it make it run through the tape machine. When I use it, none at all. We'll just make it run through it. So we go get it off our screen quick. Um, now, if we go down here, we're kind of pretty much halfway done. Like me says, more so about the, the, the compression, the EQing and the fine tuning type of stuff. So, one thing we absolutely need modern day, if you have the music digitally, you need um, uh, something like Insight 2. For as far as your standards and all of that. So, the standard volume for music nowadays is minus 14. Um, I'll make sure the Insight is underneath everything. It should be the last plugin in the chain. So the standard volume for music nowadays, our loudness volume is minus 14, right? So that's exactly what we do aim for. The good thing about Insight is that that with how simple it is to use, that's not hard. So what we do is set the loudness here to minus 14. So that's the target. So once we go on a minus 14, that target will turn red. You know what I mean? So we'll use this now if you set the limiter where it's supposed to be. So let's play it and set the limit.
All right, so as I can see, we've gone under minus 14. So that means uh, we are pushed to track a little bit too hard, you know what I mean? By modern standards. Now, if me they just uh, upload this to YouTube or whatever, I would have just left it at minus 0 0.1. But to more and show the proper levels or whatever, well, um, we'll do it the right way. So we'll go back and set the seed into about minus 1 and constantly adjust it until we get it to minus 14 consistently so let's reset it real quick So as you can see, we they are minus 14 consistently all throughout the course. You know what I mean? So by you setting it that way for the course, that means that the rest of the song load up on a consistent level as well. Not saying it's going to be as loud as the course, because we know so the course have more instruments or whatever. But from you can see from the two meter, the 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 the, the loudest is minus two. Um the loudness over the entire track is minus 14. You know what I mean? And that is what YouTube would not. So if we did have it at minus, or let's say we did have it at zero, um, YouTube would not lower it automatically to minus two because that's where the, the average volume would... Um, how would I explain LUFS? So the whole loudness... Thing where you see up at the top of the 14 that change from red to green that means the average volume for the whole truck you know what i mean so the average volume for this truck right now is minus 14. the the loudest volume for the truck is minus two which is the ceiling which is what i set upon the limiter you know what i mean but overall over the entire length of the rhythm the average volume is minus 14. that is what YouTube would have set it to or Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon, wherever you want to upload it. You know what I mean? So if we did upload it and the loudness volume over the average of the tracker when 
12, you know what I mean, which is load, then would automatically lower it down to minus 14. So a lot of people choose to ignore that, but it's just one of them crazy things they want now, you know. But if we print this now, like if we print this inside of FL Studio, so let's turn on record on this, turn on record in FL Studio, go back into the playlist and if me print it you'll see the track get a little bit louder but you'll see that we still have a little bit of room on the outside so let's record it So this is the, the problem where a lot of people might run into, right? So with me having the track limited, the way it's limited, if I double click on this, you can see say, the left side of the waveform is a lot more straightforward than the right side. So the right side have a little bit more movement or a little bit more dynamics, you know what I mean? That's easily fixed. You can just kind of push the limit a little bit harder. So it's nothing to be really worried about, you know what I mean? But like me say, if I did a master this track just for me, which is what I don't know, is I uh, put this thing a, a zero and get it as loud as possible and then upload it and make them do what they do to it anyway, you know what I mean? So that's what I don't know. So I'll we'll switch back the limiter to minus 0 0.1. and put the threshold back to minus 4.4. Turn off record. Okay, so if we record that, you'll see the difference in the waveform is going to be massive.
All right, so this is probably something where you're more used to seeing as a mastered truck. You know what I mean? This is what you typically see as a, a mastered song. You know what I mean? Which is absolutely everything out to the corners, no headroom. And this is the difference between a mix and a master. You know what I mean? With the mix, you have a lot of headroom. You can record over it, all of that with a master. There's be a room for even squeezing a whisper. You know what I mean? But... It's simple. Like me say, when you come on to mastering, it's just as simple as a EQ, a compressor, and a limiter. You don't need much more than that. Sometimes you might need multiple different EQs. You might need a multiband compressor. You know what I mean? You might use a tape machine for a little bit of saturation. But you know, do nothing like you know and nothing you know do nothing drastic where you know what i mean you just have the simple subtle small little change the biggest change what you don't make is in volume you know what i mean so don't confuse it and feel like say you have to do this and you have to use a hundred plugins and none of that you know what i mean a three plugin me use master this if you take out the the two meters you know what i mean of the or the three meter of the l2 the 670 and the, the 432 EQ. That's it. You know, use nothing else. EQ fix a little bit of problem. The compressor kind of bring forward some of the track some more and the limiter kind of bring it all home. That's it. You don't need nothing more on that, brother. You know what I mean? I mean nobody tell us you need more on that. You know what I mean? That's the only fucking thing I need. Yeah, all of it is true for our oh, oh, 57 minute blood clot. Mm. Yeah, man. Bless up all I man if you come through, man. Whoever they have for the world to our stream, big up on the bumble class self. Big way, you know? It's based the track star, you know? You know what I mean? I set up an email for, for requests and them things for tutorials. So any tutorial I might want to see, I set up an email so people can start requesting them. That way they are. You know, you can link me on WhatsApp. 24-7, you know what I mean? If you need plugins, link me on WhatsApp, same way. Me direct you to the right places and all of that. Um, join the WhatsApp group. No people in there willing for help, ready for help. No talented youth, artist and producer. All the way around, you know what I mean? Um, also, almost there 1,000 subscribers again. Because my first channel did that 3,000 before them delete it. So my also they are almost at 1,000 again. So definitely appreciate all of the support and all of them things there, you know. For real. Big man, we probably lick a thousand before the year done. That I'm a goal, you know what I mean? So I have a whole month left before that happen. But I feel like more will mash it still because lately the subs them are coming in rapid. Definitely, you know. Big up everybody who subscribe on you and all, you know. Respect everyone, buckle out one of them. Anybody who watch a video, them like me, say, man, you want to say anything specific, just let me know anything at all. If you want plugins and all them things, there join the WhatsApp group. I post links in it all the while when I find new plugins. I feel like some people would have find helpful, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. So, until next time, big bros. So, boys, be the track star. Peace.